In this session we'll be covering the IQ control by US Boiler. Uh, this is a control they're using on all their hot water cast iron boilers uh, today and it's kind of a unique control as it has two inputs. <clears throat> what this means is that we can have a domestic hot water input for an indirect water heater and a heat input at the same time and the control will prioritize your domestic hot water. That domestic hot water input could also be changed to a heat input uh, which would ignore priority and we would have be able to run two thermostat zones of heat or a heat zone with domestic hot water without adding any other relays. <coughs> This little display you see blinking actually uh, is a multi-use display. Uh, the first thing it does, it gives us the status of what's happening right now. STA1 just means there's no demand. Uh, the boiler should be, not, it should be sitting idle, not running. The second purpose of it is for um, parameters. If we go to change parameters, we can scroll through and see what the parameter is and make the changes. And the last thing it does is give us error codes. We will be talking about status on this session. Uh, we'll do another session for the parameters, what they are and how to change them. And the last one we would do would be error codes. So let's look at the status. The status, again, STA1 means that there's no, no demand on the boiler. If we give it a demand, uh, it will actually show us the startup process. So we gave it a demand uh, on the simulator and you'll soon see it go to number 17. 17 would be a self-test. And then from there it would go to number 4 pre-purge, number 6 spark, and then it would try and light and wait for the vent damper to open and do all that. Uh, depending on which control we have, uh, since it is a demonstrator, we're going to shut it down. You can see that this control over here says for atmospheric venting on this side. There's also a control for sidewall vented products which would be a fan product. Uh, it's called the ESC. So if we're going to look at the status of this control we would scroll through with the I button and, and see um, all the boiler statistics that it gives us. So the first one is actually the boiler temperature. What's the boiler temperature right now? We can hit the I button one time and we'll see that. Hit it again we see a set point temperature now since we're showing a set point temperature, that means we have an outdoor reset card plugged into this control. Uh, there is a, another part of this control called the OCP. We also have sessions out there on YouTube for that. And we can plug in optional cards. Uh, again, we are showing a set point temperature set. So it does mean we have an outdoor reset card plugged in. What the outdoor reset does, it will lower your water temperature as the days outside are warmer uh, for the the water heats the house and as it gets colder that water temperature will increase. So it does save about 10 to 20 percent uh, on your fuel bill. So if we hit the I button again the next thing we see is a high limit. The high limit is 180 degrees. We will see that on the coldest days of the year. Now if you do not have outdoor reset the boiler will target 180 degrees every time it gets a demand. The next one is a high limit differential. It's defaulted to 15 degrees. So when we do hit 180 degrees, uh, the burners will shut off, the pumps will continue to run as long as there's a call for heat, and the boiler will drop 15 degrees and fire back up again, and then run it back up to 180. The next one is TT. TT is what we call your heat demand. Uh, it's just a thermostat connection, and if we give it a call for heat back again. You can see right now it says off because there's no call. Now it says on. Good way to know if the thermostat's calling or not. If we're seeing a call from the thermostat, um, then we know it's working. Uh, if we have a thermostat calling and we don't see TT on, then we know we may have a broken wire or something going on between the thermostat and the boiler. The next one we go to is actually domestic hot water. Domestic hot water works the same way. Uh, if we give it a domestic hot water call, it would actually say domestic hot water is on. And therefore we have a call for domestic hot water from our indirect water heater. The next one is our flame signal. Of course we're seeing zeros right now because the, this is a demonstrator, not a real boiler. And it would actually give us the reading on our flame sensor on the pilot assembly. 
as long as we have a good pilot, we will have a good reading. This boiler will continue to fire until that reading gets below about 0.8, 0 0.8. Uh, if it's above that, it's fine. You will normally see numbers in the range of 7 to about 25 microamps. If we go to the next one, this is the runtime hours. Uh, this kind of tells us how the boiler is cycling. We would compare this one with the next screen, which is cycles. If you want to know the average runtime on a cast iron boiler with this IQ control, you would take your hours times 60, that converts it to minutes, and then divide it by the cycles, and that gives you an average runtime in minutes. A good cycle time on average is about 8 to 10 minutes uh, or more. The longer the boiler runs, the more efficient the boiler is. Um, we want long run times. The shorter the cycle, the less efficient. Uh, we will see a lot of run time cycles out there of two to three minutes, which is not a very good cycle. Uh, if we can get that higher, the better. So why do they short cycle? Normally due to oversized boilers. We have too much boiler for the house and it causes a shorter cycle. The shorter the cycle, the less efficient the boiler is, to, to a point, of course. And then we're back to status one. So that's a quick overview on the status buttons on this control.